Hi everyone, today we're going to see why the ANSI tables are more favorable, favorable to the supplier than they are to the buyer. Uh, the ANSI tables are also called the AQL tables. Okay, it's used for inspections based on random sampling. So there's always a risk of making a mistake because we only take a decision based on what we found on a sample, not on the wool batch. Right? So if it's good quality and we accept, good. If it's bad quality and we reject, good. But what about the other cases? There are risks here. And it's actually two very different types of risks. For uh, if, if it's bad quality and we accept it, that's the buyer's risk, uh, often called beta risk, or the statisticians would call it type 2 error. Right? And if it's good quality where we reject it, that's also a risk, right, for the supplier. Um, it's also, uh, it's called the supplier's risk or alpha risk. So the good sampling plan tries to reduce the proportion of these errors, you know, and they try to uh, make sure that in most cases we're in this case and this case. I want to introduce the OC curves, operating characteristics curves, um, that shows what the probability of rejection is. Okay, um, so it looks like this. This is probability of acceptance. Okay, 100%, 0%. This is the proportion of defects. So in this case, it means when there's 2% of defects, the proportion, the, the the probability that we accept the batch is 80%. Okay, very simple, just a curve. Now, in an ideal world, uh, it wouldn't be a curve, it would look like this. Because you would set your AQA, you would say, I want to accept everything that's below 2.5%. I want to accept it. I want 100% chance of acceptance. But then if it's above, you know, more than 2.5% of defects, I want to reject. You know, I want 0% of acceptance. Zero. So it would look like this, but of course, um, if we do inspections based on random sampling, we're not going to be able to replicate that. So we want a curve that kind of replicates it, you know, kind of gets close to it. And what does the standard look at when it decides that it's, you know, a curve with this shape rather than one that goes more like this? Okay, it looks at the two risks that we mentioned before the alpha risk and the beta risk, the supplier's risk and the buyer's risk. And one thing that's very important to know is that the standard set the alpha risk at about 5% and the beta risk at about 10%. So the supplier's risk is rather small, but the buyer's risk is about double the supplier's risk. And that's why we say that the standard is more Favorable, favorable to the supplier. Again, why is this the case? Because this standard is designed for lot by lot inspections. Uh, that's the case where a buyer keeps buying from the same supplier and the process average is good, you know, the, the number of defects is good, so the standard um, uh, assumes that the number of defects in the wool batch is acceptable by the buyer and it just wants to reject the the cases where there, there are big problems. Okay, now I want to explore. Um, sorry, I want to explore uh, two consequences of this. When even if you set an AQ at a one percent, you might receive a high proportion of defects. In this case, let's say your sample size is two hundred. Okay, you check two hundred pieces, and your AQ at is one percent. Well, from time to time you might accept a batch that still has more than five more than four percent of defects even though your AQL was only one percent well that's that's a big difference right so uh, and again you know it says here again ten percent of the lots will be expected to be accepted at the consumer's risk quality that's the buyer's risk from time to time you get a batch that you accept even though there are way too many defects in your taste and let's see it in another way uh, that also shows that the standard is more favorable, favorable to the supplier. Let's say your sample size is 500. 
and you set an AQL limit at 1.5%. So if you multiply these two numbers, you get 7.5%, 7.5. So you would think, okay, if I check 500 samples and I find 8, 8 is a rejection limit. 8, that's already rejected, right? No. When you look at the standard, the number it gives you is it's 15. Now, okay, here's the proof. 500 samples here, 1.5% for the AQL, and right here, 15. So, again, you know, it's very favorable to the supplier. It seldom rejects a batch, even though the batch is good. That's the whole point of the standard. So, some buyers attempted to say, well, we need to get tougher than that, maybe with an acceptance zero standard, meaning that if we find just one defect, that's enough, just reject. Very tough. And it's getting some traction uh, in some industries. It's, it's already pretty popular in the car industry in North America. And we actually don't really advise to go for this kind of standards. Um, it's very imbalanced in the, the buyer's favor, but like, it's very, very unbalanced. Now, look, it looks something like this. You have a huge alpha. That's the supplier's risk. And the buyer's risk is pretty small. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty hard to find um, a supplier, let's say in China, that would accept this. So my conclusion is that as a buyer, uh, these inspections are good. I'm not talking about the acceptance, acceptance zero. I'm talking about the ANSI classic inspections. They are good at avoiding widespread problems. You know, if there is a problem on 20% of the pieces, the inspector should be able to find it and reject a lot. They are good at maintaining some pressure on the supplier. But don't fool yourself with the, the meaning of the AQL. Again, you know, you might set the AQL at 1%, you might accept some batches with way more defects. So don't fool yourself. And also, if you buy, let's say you buy from China and then you sell in your own country to your own customers, be very careful about what you promise to them. You better take some margin, um, you know, promise them something loose, you know, compared to what you imposed to your supplier. And finally, um, the buyer should really try to work with good manufacturer. That's where it all, it all starts and it, it all ends. You know, if you work with bad suppliers, you're going to have problems. You work with good suppliers, life is going to be much easier. So thank you for your time. I hope it helps. If you want to read more about this topic, come to my blog at qualityinspection.org. Thank you.